Hello and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the information certification exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is collaboration, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association, helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Collaborate and Deliver Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll review the primary considerations for enabling virtual teams, including asynchronicity, knowledge sharing, presence tools, shared workspaces, online meeting tools, and bandwidth. As the term suggests, a virtual team is a group of people who are working together toward a common goal, but may be spread across time, geography, and organizational boundaries, and are using the web and other communications technologies to connect and collaborate. Writing for the ACM Special Interest Group for Management Information Systems back in 2004, Ann Powell, Gabriel Piccoli, and Blake Eyes prepared the chart you see to identify four major areas of related focus. Inputs of the design, culture, technical, and training variety. Task processes encompassing communication, coordination, and the fit between tasks, technology, and structure. Socio-emotional processes including relationship building, cohesion, and trust. And outputs centering on performance and satisfaction. What's striking about this short list, which is still quite relevant today, is that every item has an element or more of human behavior embedded in it. Culture, cohesion, coordination, satisfaction. This is perhaps the single most important takeaway of any discussion about virtual teams. For as difficult as it can be to build effective working groups in person, it's doubly so in a virtual environment, where physical interaction and first-hand observations of mood and body language are rare or lacking altogether. The fact that virtual team members may be in different time zones, or simply that people can be very busy and thus tough to match schedules with, means that accommodation must be made to allow them to work asynchronously, or in a time-shifted manner, as when uploading documents or annotations to shared workspaces, or making contributions to a wiki. The reverse, of course, is working synchronously, where everyone interacts in real time, as in online meetings, through instant messaging, or via Skype. Since it's logical to assume that the virtual team is made up of people selected for their expertise and experience in the area being worked on, it's important to give them mechanisms for capturing and tagging what they know so it can be shared, especially in light of the asynchronicity just described, which can make it tough for them to connect in real time to do a more conventional brain dump. Wikis, forums, and social tools like Jive and Yammer are often used for this purpose and the most effective installations make excellent use of the directory search functions baked within so users can identify colleagues who can help them if they can't think of any right off the bat. Presence capabilities are often part and parcel of many collaboration tools, lighting up when enrolled individuals are online and displaying their state of availability in a meeting, etc. Instant messaging applications have been doing this for years, of course, and it's incredibly useful when users are looking for a quick answer or response since they can focus on colleagues who are showing they're in rather than send an email and have to sit and wonder. Of course, virtual teams need to get together once in a while to catch up on all the individual activity and to make decisions. Online meeting tools are the answer here and they run the gamut from enabling simple desktop sharing and presentations to producing formal conferences, Q&A sessions, and voting and sometimes the ability to archive and index the proceedings so they can be referenced and leveraged later on. Which way to go obviously depends on the size of your team and how often it may need to include numbers of outsiders. Another variable has to do with the volume and nature of the documents the team is working with and working on. Shared workspaces are common in this regard as they accommodate the sharing of materials team members may need to reference and the ability to collaborate on the creation of new ones be they meeting notes, reports, or what have you. 
Shared workspaces can feature many of the elements of document and content management, including check-in, check-out, version control, meta tagging, and workflow, as well as the other capabilities covered in this module. Definitionally and functionally, the differences between them are probably not worth haggling over. Suffice it to say that shared workspace technology, per se, is designed specifically with collaboration in mind, while it may be a byproduct of the other related stacks. Perhaps one of the single most important considerations related to virtual teams is that of bandwidth, which I've left for last for emphasis and because it ties all the other ones together. Bandwidth, of course, is the capacity of the network to carry all the traffic generated by the team. In most of today's enterprises, this isn't even a thought anymore, thinking, messaging, and document transfers for the most part. But add audio and video to the mix, as many are, and it suddenly can become an issue, especially if there are participants who must connect remotely, say, by smartphone over the cellular network, or DSL, or perish the thought, dial-up. These folks likely will not enjoy the speed and seamlessness of their office-bound mates plugged into high-speed networks, and the experience can be quite frustrating, or even project-killing. This same line of logic, by the way, also applies to server capacity, either internally or in the cloud, for virtual team processing loads can be significant, but probably only at times. Managing the load, therefore, can be something of a challenge. This module has discussed the key factors to consider when supporting virtual teams. These include asynchronicity, knowledge sharing, presence tools, shared workspaces, online meeting tools, and bandwidth. Next, you may wish to explore the module that explores ways to leverage consumer IT and commercial sites to improve collaboration. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.